Hi, the video you're about to see features me troubleshooting and repairing a an high power audio amplifier. But before we get started, I just want to share two pieces of safety advice with you. The first is anytime you work with a power supply or an amplifier or pretty much anything that has multiple grounds in there that are not referenced to Earth, it's always a good idea to float your oscilloscope off Earth by putting a two prong adapter on there. And the reason for doing that is if you short Earth ground to the grounds inside of the unit under test, you can wind up damaging the unit under test or the oscilloscope itself. But before you go and do that, make sure that your oscilloscope is able to be floated above ground because some oscilloscopes can't do that. And the last thing I want to mention before we get started is it's a good idea to use a 10 to 1 oscilloscope probe. This way you're applying one tenth of the voltage that you're testing to your oscilloscope. And that saves your front end of your oscilloscope from blowing out. So without further ado, let's get started. Hey, it's Kevin. I've got this audio amplifier here. This is a Crown CL4 which my understanding is electrically equivalent to the CE4000, which I guess remains to be seen based on what the schematics, whether or not they match what's inside. So I got this from a local theater and it was pulled out of installation because it wasn't working. Uh, claimed that the fault lights were just blinking. So I'm gonna try to fix this thing and see if I can get up and running, but let's just take a look at what happens when we power on. I think it hasn't been powered on in probably a year or two, but let's see what's happening here. Seems that we just got fault LEDs here, so I'm gonna open this thing up, see what's going on inside. Got my scope there. Also got my handy Fluke DVM. Got a set of schematics. And uh, an interest in fixing this, so let's see what we can do. One of the things that I noticed is that when I turn this off, the fault LEDs seem to go out pretty quickly. And they shouldn't do that, so I think what may be happening is the PFC booster may not be boosting. Take a look. Usually it goes out without, in about 10 seconds rather than two or three. So that may be a clue to help me figure out what's going on with this thing. As I had suspected, the PFC booster isn't boosting. Take a look at my DVM here and I got 160 volts, which would be the peak DC value of rectified AC. 120 volts roughly. So it's not boosting. And I can tell it's not boosting because my boost FETs have no gate drive on them. So therefore the boost PWM may not be running. So I need to do a little bit more investigation, but looks like I'm making pretty good progress. My first measurement confirmed my suspicion about the PFC booster. And much to my convenience, the schematic is the same for the CE4000 as it is for the CL4. So this should be a snap to try to troubleshoot. Took a look at some signals here that would cause the PFC, PWM, to not run. And uh, so I looked at the under voltage lockout voltage, and it's supposed to be greater than 1.3 volts. I actually got the data sheet up on my computer here, if you can see it. So um, according to the schematic, um, I'm supposed to have 2.126 volts at that node, and I do. I measured that. I'm also supposed to have less than or equal to 5 volts at the over voltage protection node, and that's pretty much nothing so what I did notice is that the soft start pin was at zero volts and that voltage needs to be higher than about 300 millivolts to get the uh, PFC to start up so what I did was I actually took a battery and uh, I connected it to the soft start pin and I was able to get it to boost so I'll show you that here so as you can see right now there's nothing no gate drives so what I'm going to do is I'm going to Apply the soft start voltage. Now we're boosting, and our PFC DC bus is about 400 volts, like it's supposed to be. And unfortunately, I still have fault LEDs flashing, so I have to square that away. But basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chalk up the uh, soft start problem to either a bad PWM chip supplying insufficient current to charge up the soft start caps, or in lieu of that, what it may be is the, the caps, the soft start caps may be shorted when the voltage is applied to them, but I doubt it very much due to the fact that I measured them with a DC um, ohm meter and I didn't measure short, I measured open circuit, but that doesn't mean that they're not leaky or something like that. So I think I'm going to lift them out of the circuit and see if uh, the PFC booster still keeps boosting. So I had an epiphany, I figured out what's going on here. 
turns out the soft start for the PFC. You can see it there, it says PFC SS is actually pulled low by um, a low input voltage condition to kind of prevent the um, booster from beating the crap out of itself and overdriving its input inductor. So what actually drives that down is there's a soft start for the PFC. As you can see, it's right there, PFC SS. However, that's contingent upon whether or not there is a condition by which this circuit here is pulled low. So I took a look at uh, TP39 there and I noticed that it's low and it's supposed to be high because the rectified AC, which is your primary DC link, if that voltage goes too low, the PFC booster is shut down and will not start up. So I noticed that I had uh, greater than 7.5 volts on pin 3 of this comparator over here. And I have 7.5 volts on the non-inverting, on the rather inverting terminal. But over at test point 39 I only had about 3 tenths of a volt, which isn't enough to drive this comparator here on. And then turn on all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull up test point 39. And then I'll show you the result of that. So just bear with me. I'm trying to work with one hand on the camera, one hand in the amplifier, so make sure I don't touch any points together that don't belong. Hmm, get my light here. So that's test point six down in there. And I gotta short it to test point 39, which is kind of off to the side. So test point six. And I'm going to short it to test point 39. Bear with me. Hmm. So as you can see, once I've done that, the fault LEDs are out. My PFC is boosting, as is indicated and I have my DC link. So I'm actually gonna call this a fault with this comparator. So I'm gonna replace the comparator and uh, hopefully my amplifier will be up and running. So a few words of uh, background information. I faux pas a few times during this video, which is the nature of troubleshooting. I do this stuff for a living. So sometimes you think uh, a problem is caused by one thing and it could be another, but um, I replaced the comparator and initially it didn't solve the problem so I took another look at the schematic and I realized that uh, once again my eyes are playing tricks on me so I'll show you on the schematic what I wound up changing but anyway um, before I do that let me just power this thing up and show that it works now and fault LEDs go out as they're supposed to after about five seconds so anyway and hopefully you can see this this comparator U11 I replaced and um, the reason I replaced it was because the test point 39 was about 0.34 volts and it's supposed to be greater than seven and a half volts so the reason it was 0.34 volts is because you have this Schottky over here D19 which has a forward voltage of about 0.3 volts so when pin 1 is pulling the pull up down what happens is you get a Schottky voltage drop across there so as I had said before, I was measuring U11 and I said that pin 3 was high and actually it wasn't. That was a faux pas on my part. What I was actually doing was I was measuring test point 249 which was 9.5 volts which in theory should be the same voltage as you have into U11 because op amps and comparators don't draw current, right? So across 49.9K I was getting quite a bit of a voltage drop. So what I did was I lifted C4, excuse me, C72 out of the circuit and I watched the voltage uh, go back up to about 9.5 volts like it was supposed to be. So I took C49 out as well because I figured if one's bad, they're probably both bad and C49 is just going to follow suit eventually. So I want, what I wound up doing was um, I replaced both of them and I also replaced the comparator because remember originally that's what I thought was wrong. So a little bit of a piece of information about these capacitors. They're ceramic 
1210 style. Uh, they're 50 volts. And typically ceramics don't go bad. They're pretty robust, but what generally does kill ceramics, and probably was the case with this, is when the board is put together, if the ceramic capacitors see too high of a temperature, you can wind up with problems over time, especially when heat is involved. So I replaced both of those two capacitors and the comparator. And um, now, as you can see, the results are quite, um, quite positive. So just a couple of words of caution about this power supply excuse me, about this amplifier and its power supply. The way that this works is actually pretty simple. You want to get power factor correction and the way that you do that is you always draw current from the AC line. So the way that this does this is it boosts up the rectified AC voltage to 400 volts DC. And the way it does that is it shorts this big inductor here to ground many thousands of times per second to charge it up and when the inductor short at the ground is switched open, it charges up these big caps here which collect a very large um, voltage change because remember according to Lenz's law you cannot have current change instantaneously through an inductor without developing a very high voltage across it so that concept is exploited in a DC to DC booster but anyway um, since you develop 400 volts DC in here you gotta be really really careful because 400 volts DC could be lethal and unlike AC, DC is a lot more um, damaging to your body because you tend to get stuck to it, especially at higher voltages. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't be poking around inside of these things. And the other um, thing that I want to warn you about is this, uh, for the most part, incorporates surface mount uh, devices pretty much everywhere. Now because of my profession, I have a lot of experience with reworking surface mount devices, but even I make mistakes sometimes too. So. If you've been able to troubleshoot and you think you know what part is bad and you don't have any experience reworking surface mount devices, what you should do is find a local TV repair shop and tell them which parts you want replaced and see if they can have either themselves or somebody do it for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load test this thing. I have uh, my 8 ohm 600 watt load connected here. It's two 4 ohm resistors, 300 watts a piece, total uh, power. And I got my scope and I got my DVM. So just give me one second and I'm going to slowly bring up a 315 hertz sine wave. So there's my sine wave, and I have 57.1 volts AC on the output, and I'm not hitting clipping, and I have my computer turned up as loud as it goes, so I think the input sensitivity of this um, isn't very high, so as a result I'm not able to rail it out and uh, activate the clipping light. But um, So basically what's happening here is I'm just driving a resistive load and there is a lot, a lot, a lot of heat on those resistors. If you ever do something like this, do not touch those resistors. And it's usually a good idea to keep a fan next to it too. So I make a quick calculation here. Get my phone out. So P equals V squared over R. So we have 57 times 57 divided by 8 and we have 406 watts so again this isn't uh, its maximum output power its maximum output power is actually 600 watts at 8 ohms so again this is due to the sensitivity and also the um, voltage swing on the sound card of my computer here but as you can see everything's working great uh, so thanks for watching